supply, 250 head of well-broken horses, that's $60 a head. Now the bid of Mr. Sam Butler. Right here. You offer to supply 250 head of well-broken horses at $55 a head. That's right. And finally, the bid of Mr. Ben Cartwright. Sir. And you offer to supply 250 head of well-broken horses at $58 a head. Contract goes to Mr. Ben Cartwright. Now, hold on here. You better take another look. My bid is $3 a head less than his. There's another consideration, Mr. Butler. Yeah, what's that? I inspected all the horses offered for sale here and found the Ponderosa stock in far better condition than any other. Mr. Cartwright, let's go out to your ranch and complete the details of the transaction. Yes. Better luck next time, sir. Yeah. Paul, I'm going to stop and pick up those flies. I'll see you out the range later, Major. Fine, I'll see you later. before you came, huh? Yeah, he did. He's back now. You know what he found? And he ain't found at all yet. Eddie, there's no way to soften it. Your pa's dead. I know he's dead. I've seen the grave. That ain't all I've seen. I've seen 21 bullet holes in the front of that house. Somebody liked to shot it to pieces. Yes, there was considerable shooting. Why? What happened? Now, you get a grip on yourself. So as I can tell you, your pa's back got worse after you left. A whole lot worse. Finally, he couldn't work at all. He went head over heels in debt. Then the papers come through, foreclosure eviction notice. Now, Eddie, you know how mean your pa could get. Deputy Williams went out to serve him. Your pa put a bullet through his chest. He killed him. And you killed pa. He didn't want to. Your pa fought it himself up in the house. Wouldn't come out. Didn't seem like he wanted to come out alive. Now, you got to understand, young fella. I had ten good men in the posse out there risking their necks. He kept a shooting at us, and there weren't nothing for us to do but shoot back. I'm sorry as can be, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Now, you hold on a minute. You in with McKay? What of it? Son of Tom McKay? Yeah. Where'd you get this horse? My pa gave him to me. I got to lean against anything this family owns. $150 still outstanding. I'm taking this horse and saddle to recover my money. You can't do that. Yes, he can, Eddie. Unless you can pay him what's owed. Well, I ain't even got 10 cents. Then I take the horse and saddle. Well, no, you ain't. Wait, wait, fellas. Look here, Amos. What would happen if I took Eddie out to the Rose and gave him a job? Then he could sort of pay you off a little at a time, huh? No, sir. I let his paw have credit, and he beat me out what he owed. What if I stood good for him? No. I don't want no charity from you or anybody else in this place. That kid's wild. Mean. What do you want to try to help him for? It was my bullet that killed his father. Who's back in town? Mr. Butler. That's right, Sam Butler. The man who gave you your first job. You glad to see me, boy? Sure I am. You little thief, you.
I am not. You broke into my office, broke into my desk, and took $75, and you don't call that stealing? I had to have that money. My pa needed it. Let's go see the sheriff you're going to jail. Jesus. No, wait a minute. It must have got to be locked up. I'm, I'm crazy scared of jail. Oh, ain't that just too bad? Please, could I work it out? What do you mean, work it out? Amos Road took your horse and your saddle. And I don't hire no man unless he's got something to ride. Well, what am I going to do? Well, now. You just don't know. If you had a chance to work for the Ponderosa, why didn't you take it? I don't want no charity. Yeah, but Hoss owes you. What's he owe me for? He's the man who killed your pa. Hoss Cartwright, huh? Great chess master just sacrificed his bishop. <laughs> Tricked you into that one, Joseph. Uh, you sure did. <laughs> Checkmate. Well, I'll say one thing for you, Hoss. You're a good loser. Yeah, well, you ought to be. He's had enough practice. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> I'm going to have to bet, too. Hoss? <laughs> Sir? You going up? No, I think I'll go ahead and get a little breath of fresh air. Now you turn around, I ain't gonna shoot no man in the back. Eddie, what what are you doing here? You're the man that killed my pa, ain't you? Yes, I am. My pa always said an eye for an eye. Explain how it happened. You'll you'll at least give me that much time, won't you? Talk fast. The sheriff deputized a bunch of us. I was only one of them. He had me and another feller to fire in the windows just to keep your paw pinned down. That was all, just to pin him down. While the rest of them sneaked around the back and tried to get inside and capture him alive. You're still a man that killed my paw. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. I couldn't help it. He stood up just as I shot. You gotta believe that boy. I didn't want to kill him. I didn't mean to kill him. If you think I've had a minute's peace since then, you're a lot more foolish boy than I think you are. Well, what difference? He's dead, ain't he? There's a lot of difference, Ed. I shot your paw accidentally. You shoot me. That's murder. It's a big difference. That ain't an eye for an eye, Ed. One's accident. One's murder. <laughs> you ever taken a man's life, Ed? It ain't something you can live with easy. Believe me, it ain't. But if murdering me, murdering me is what you got to do, then ain't no way I can stop you. So get the murdering. Think about it. Think on it real hard, Ed. <laughs> Nothing. 
Ed, I, I want you to go on back into town and think on what you tried to do tonight. I think you'll come to the conclusion that you made the right decision. Now, you, you better go and get out of here. Hurry. Go on. say Eddie came looking for you with a gun, and you let him go. He didn't use a gun, Paul. He could have shot me in the back. Well, I think Pa's right. I think he made a mistake letting him go. What was I supposed to have done? Killed him like I did his Pa? His Pa was a murderer. Oh, Joe. You know as well as I do that there wasn't a finer man in Nevada than Tom McKay before he had that accident and hurt his back. Best horseman I ever saw. Oh, sure, he knew horses, but he, he certainly didn't know people. If he'd only opened up, let somebody know about his troubles. Somebody to help him. We'd have helped him. First time he knew anything was wrong, he'd already killed the deputy. And I killed him. Oh, horse, there was a lot of shooting going on. Where are you going? I'm going to go in town and see if I can find Eddie. I want to talk to him. How about some coffee? Not this time, Luke. Thank you. Hello, Hoss. Huh? Oh, howdy, Clem. How are you? Anything I can do for you? Yeah, I'm looking for Eddie McKay. You seen him? Well, not today. You want something special? I just won't talk to him, that's all. I figure I want him that much. Oh, Hoss, you don't owe that boy nothing. Yeah, sort of like talk to him anyhow. Huh? I'll see you, Cliff. Go on, Hoss. Howdy, Amos. Hey, howdy, Hoss. How's business? Well, pretty good if I can collect my money. Uh, you seen Eddie McKay? Uh, yeah, seems I did see him a little while ago. We're about. Uh, I think he went into the cattleman's saloon. Ah, fine. Thanks, Amos. I got nothing to say to you. Eddie, that, that offer for a job on the Ponderosa that I made you is still good. I ain't gonna work for a man who killed my pa. Eddie, you gotta work somewhere. Well, it ain't gonna be you. Yeah. Well, look, I'm gonna be around town for a while. If you change your mind, look me up. You made a mistake, Eddie. You shouldn't have turned down that job that Hoss offered you. I ain't gonna work for him. Oh, yes, you are. What do you mean? You can be useful to me working for the Cartwrights. How? I'll tell you what you need to know when the time comes. All right, now, hold on. I don't want no part of this. Well, you got no choice, Eddie. Now, 
take the job or go to jail for stealing that $75 from me. Corral. What's he doing here? Well, I figured we can always use another hand. Well, Ed can do a few odd jobs around the place. Sorry with you and Paul. Yeah, well, it's fine with me. In case he's home with a sick wife, I got stuck with this job. He can start right now. Get back to breaking horses. Yeah, I'll uh, go out there with you. I figure I need to talk to Paul, you know. Eddie, get with us, buddy. We'll see you. to bust in these bronx. What's Eddie doing out here? I brought him back to town, boy. Or well, maybe he can do some handy jobs around to make a good hand out of him. Don't go any boy. I feel I owe that kid something. I feel responsible for him. Why, well, do you think it's smart bringing him out here? Oh, I don't think Eddie's a bad boy. I... I think I can do something with him. I'd like to show you. All right. Show me. Oh, oh, I think we're going to have to get rid of that animal. I don't think anybody's ever going to break him. Don't you worry, I'll bust that hammerhead if it takes me all summer. <laughs> you may just have to ride him all summer. <laughs> What's Paul say about Eddie? Well, he said I was going to have to show him. That's exactly what I am going to do. See you later. Well, let's get back on him again. I'm gonna spend my life doing a lot of dirty odd jobs for you or anybody else. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with cutting wood. He saw Joe doing it. He don't have to do it all the time. That's right. He's a top hand. He's your brother. Brother or not, he's a top hand. A top hand takes any job that comes along. Well, I ain't gonna saw wood. Let me tell you something, Ed. I brought you out here. Hoping to give you a chance to make something out of yourself. But I ain't gonna mollycoddle you. I'm gonna ask you to do something. And I'm gonna expect you to do it. But of course, that don't mean you have to do it. You can always amble on away from here, down the road, and into town, into that saloon where I found you. But I got a notion you'll end up cleaning cuspidors to pay for drapes. It's your choice to make. 
Either you pick up that saw and go back to cutting the wood or just hit the trail. saddle with you? That's right. A broke-down horse on wore-out saddle. I figured I earned that much. Well, I, I figured you earned much more. You're gonna get paid payday like everybody else. This much will do. Well, uh, can I ask why you're leaving? Or should I say quitting? Yeah, call it quitting, because that's what I'm doing. I'm sick of graining chickens and slopping pigs and cleaning barns. That's kids' work. Or an old man's work, but it sure ain't mine. Well, uh, what kind of work do you figure is your sort of work? I'm a hand. Maybe I ain't a top hand like your brother, but I'm a working ranch hand. I know stock and roping and branding, and I know horses. Well, my pa was the best hand with horses you ever saw. Till he fell off in them rocks and hurt his back. No question about it. Your pa was one of the best. If you're half as good, you'll be a dandy. Well, you'll never find out. You won't give me a chance. Well, Eddie, I had to find out if you was tough enough to stick it out more than a day or two, didn't I? Yeah, I stuck it out. Where'd it get me? Nowhere. Eddie, you, uh, you think you can bust one of them bronx out there? Well, heck yeah. My pop tell you I was busting bronx and I was knee-eye to a duck. And you'd like a chance to prove it, wouldn't you? You're darn right. Fine. Then you got it. First thing in the morning. Now, I'm going to saddle this crow baby going to bed. See you tomorrow. Go ahead. You want to try the Ampelusa? Oh, if you think you can be trusted. Be trusted as much as any horse. Joe? Yeah, bring me the pinto, can't he? Pinto and the Ampelusa. So was a better horse, Joe. Yeah, but I broke the pinto. I want to make sure he stayed broke. Morning, Paul. Morning. Oh, Eddie here wants to try his hand on one of them bronks. Show us what he can do. Well, Eddie, think you're good enough to ride it? Sure do, Mr. Cartwright. How do you want him? Tough or easy? Tough. Hey, Kenny. Yeah. Settle up old Hammerhead. <laughs> hey, Joe, not that tough. What's the matter with old Hammerhead? Well, we, there ain't nobody around here been able to ride him yet. Good, I'll take him. All right, go ahead. Follow me. Oh. The boy wanted the chance to prove himself. You gotta give it to him. Well, I've been sort of 
pushing his face in the measly chores, just see how much he could take. And I'll tell you this, he's put up with it a lot longer than I would have. Yeah, I understand he did a pretty good job. Yeah, but last night he was going to quit. Huh? He wants to be a regular hand, so, so bad he can taste it. And I think he's earned a chance. He says his paw taught him to ride. What Sam's coming out for? Howdy, Sam. Howdy. I'll be out here. Looking to buy some horses. Oh, yeah. That army feller says you've got the best condition stock in these parts. Well, we have some uh, pretty good stock. This bunch will be ready for sale in a couple of days. If you're interested. I might be. <laughs> Looks like you're making a real top hand out of that boy. We're trying to. All right, turn him loose. <laughs> Very good, Eddie. Great ride, Ed. You betcha. Proud of you, son. That was real good. What do you think of that ride, Sam? That's pretty good. I like your stock, Ben. Get together on a price, I'll buy them. All right, let's talk about it. Hey, Mr. Cartwright. I got a job busting horses or not? You bet you do. You're gonna make it, Ed. You'll make it. celebrate on Joseph. That's five dollars I don't mind losing. <laughs> Congratulations. Hi, Miss Butler. Hi, Candy. Doc uh, shaping up pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Take a few more days. See ya. Yep.
I was just riding by. Thought I'd look you up. You found me. I was saying he's going along. All right, I guess. You, uh, still wrangling horses? Yeah, we're readying that string for you. Fine, boy, fine. You just keep doing good for the cart rides here. Remember, I got plans for you. Um, uh, listen, Mr. Butler. Yeah? I've been thinking. Well, you think about this for a while. I can have you locked up any time I want to. Seems to me that the... You've been forgetting who put that bullet in your paw's head. No, I ain't about to forget that. That's fine. Keep up the good work. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Carvine. House will be down in a few minutes. Did you deliver that lot of horses to Sam Butler? All except old Hammerhead. He's tied to the hitching post outside. You know, a horse is real proud of you. Well, does it mean something to you to have him proud of you? Sure, sure. Eddie, everything all set for? Yep. Here's a bill of sale for all the horses, uh, except old Hammerhead. Yeah. Old Hammerhead's one of the best. Well, sure he is. Ain't you told him? Well, I, 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 I think you ought to tell him. Tell me what? Well, Eddie, it's sort of pawing my way of saying thank you for a job well done. From now on, old Hammerhead, the saddle that goes with him, is yours. And Paul and me decided that since you're a top hand now, that you got to take the responsibilities of a top hand. Now, here's a bill of sale. You take it to Sam Butler, he'll pay you, and you bring the money back. Well, get on your horse and get going. <laughs> Paul, I'll tell you how much I appreciate you going along with me on this. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, Hoss, sometimes you surprise me. A fact which pleases me enormously. Well, now, Eddie, I'd say this is our lucky day. I was going to have you break into Cartwright's desk and take the money I was going to pay for them horses. You're good at breaking into a desk. We won't have to worry about that now. Mr. Butler, I... Look, kid, if you're smart, you'll do as I say. Sign. I ain't gonna do it. Sign that receipt and take off down the road to San Francisco. Now. Ah, it's just the same as letting you steal them horses. Oh, no, it ain't, Eddie. It's a business deal. When I sell them horses... I'm going to send you half of what I make. No, I can't do that to Hoss. Look, kid, it boils down to this. You got no choice. You do as I say and make yourself a nice piece of change. Or I'll have to turn you over to Sheriff.
guess he ain't coming back. I reckon that's wrong, man. in here yesterday afternoon with a bill of sale. This is your father's signature, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So everything being right and proper, I gave him the money. Well, did he, uh, he give you a receipt or anything? Yeah. There it is. Something wrong? Yeah. He never got back to the ranch with the money. Is that a fact? You know, I kind of worried about giving a kid that money. But he had the bill of sale and all. And he said that's the way you wanted it. Yeah, that's the way I wanted it. Thanks. Well, I reckon you live and learn. Hosh, you nuthead. Why don't you come in here last night and tell me this? Well, that burn a camera. I want to give the old kid every chance in the world. Oh, I understand your thinking. He didn't seem like such a bad kid. No. He seemed like a good kid to me. Well, it's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. Well, what are we going to do now? He's taking your money. It's got to be grand larceny. I expect he'll travel far and fast. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got a good horse. I'll tell him which direction he'd go. Well, I'll get word out. Thanks, Captain. Don't you worry, Nun Hoss. We'll get him sooner or later. outside. Let me have him back, Hoss. I didn't hurt him. Look here, Eddie. Sit down a minute. Sit down. Tell me and Clem exactly what happened. Well, I'm scared to jail. That's what it amounts to. I can't stand being locked up. When I run off a year ago, I... I got in some trouble down in a town by the border. I stole a pair of pants. They put me in what they call a jail. It weren't nothing but an iron box. Hot, no water. You couldn't see out. They left me in there for three days. So ever since then, well, I just think of being locked up, I start to shake. And then when Sam Butler said he's gonna put me in jail, I, I didn't know what to do. Now, why would Sam want to put you in jail? I stole from him. Money I needed for Pa. How come he didn't put you in jail? I done what he said. What was that? He made me give him a receipt, like he paid for the horses. Only he didn't pay for them. Well, how do you figure on getting by with that? I, I was supposed to run off to San Francisco. And he'd show the receipt, say he paid for the horses. Everybody think I took your money. That's just about what it would amount to. Yeah. You were stealing a bunch of horses, ain't it? He kept saying you killed my pa. And you owed it to me. And if I didn't, he'd put me in jail. So I did. I run off. But, uh, you came back, didn't you, Eddie? farther I went, the slower I got. Didn't seem I could do that to you, Hoss. The horse and saddle's outside. I guess I won't be needing him for a long time to come. No. Hold on a minute, Ed. You know, I, I can't see anything that he's done wrong. Except maybe he was taking a little too much time getting that money back to the ranch. What do you mean? Well, I mean that 
You've taken the first step in the right direction, Eddie. Now, go ahead and finish the job. Go out there and find Sam and get that money. Sam ain't gonna give that boy the money. Of course not. But he's gotta take that next step. He's gotta try. What are you doing here? I come for Cartwright's money. I paid you that money, boy. That's a lie. You wanted to look like I stole it. You can put me in jail if you want, but you're going to have to pay me that money. I'll handle this. And I see you two had an argument. I care, Clem. You help me. These, these... Now, Sam, I don't know if I can help you or why I should help you. The way I hear it, you used Eddie to steal the price of them horses. But you're the law, and I got a receipt to show it. That's right, Sam. You got a receipt that says you paid for them horses. But Eddie knows you didn't pay for them horses. And I know you didn't pay for them horses. And what's more important is you know you didn't pay for them horses. But you just now, receipt or no receipt, Sam, you stole them horses. And ain't nobody gonna steal a string of horses from us and then walk easy. Now, no question about it. You can make trouble for us. But on the other hand, I can give you some trouble too, Sam. And you've had a little taste of the trouble I'll make for you. I mean, just a little taste, Sam. Uh, hold on a minute. I got an idea. What? Well, what we got to do here is wipe the slate clean. Now, uh, Sam, you forget your quarrel with Eddie and give Haas the money. And Haas, you forget what Sam tried to do. We'll all start over. That's fine with me. All right. All right, I'll go along. Why don't you and me take a little walk over to your office? See you later. Nope, here he is, Paul. Did you want to see me, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Eddie, I did. What about? Didn't you tell him? Well, I, I thought it'd be better if you told him. Tell me what? 
Eddie, you're fired. Fired? What for? What'd I do? Well, now, son, you just can't keep on working here at the Ponderosa when you have your own spread to work. Here, here's the uh, deed to your boss ranch. Well, I can't accept this, Mr. Cartwright. Now, Eddie, uh, we're not just giving this to you. It's not charity. We expect you to give us first choice of your best stock. Now, just don't stand around here. You got a spread to work. Get going. Thank you. Thank all of you. Look, Eddie. Good luck, Eddie. Oh, that was nice. Well, I don't know how nice you're going to think this is, because with Eddie gone, you fellas are going to have to do your share of feeding the chickens and sloughing the pigs and taking care of the calves and cleaning out the barns. I said quarter to three. I'm wondering if we're early or late. Ah, uh, we're late. The bank's closed. Won't be able to get that cashier's check today. Well, now, you worry about the unimportant stuff. I'm just wondering how long it'll take us to get across the street to that saloon. Stop worrying about the saloon. That'll be open till midnight or later. Yeah, but, Joe, on a hot day like this, they might run out of cold beer. Hey, Mike. Josh, how you doing? Joe. Dude, how are you? Sorry we're late. Uh, we weren't waiting. We just got here, but the bank's already closed. Well, we're not going to let that stand beat us, are we? We got the money for the herd right here. Well, what good's the money going to do is we got no bank. You want to turn it into a cashier's check, so let's go get one. Just like that, eh? Why not? Done enough business with this bank to rate a couple of favors. This is Mike Farrell. Open up. Sorry, the bank's closed. I'm Mike Farrell. This is Joe Cartwright. He wants to trade $15,000 for a cashier's check. He's in a hurry, and so am I, so open this door. You must be new. I've never seen you before. Well, not exactly new. I've been here a month, but I do know you. Uh, I wouldn't have opened the door except that Mr. Moore, our president, pointed you out on the street yesterday. Good. Let's get on with it. It's uh, highly irregular. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure Mr. Moore would approve. He'll approve, or I'll take my business elsewhere. Besides, so, there's nothing irregular about a cash deal. Money right here. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Fifteen thousand one hundred and twenty dollars, and please make out a cashier's check to Joe Cartwright. Well, my tally makes you hurt. It hit over a thousand, Joe. Yeah, we would have been ten over. We lost two crossing the creek. Well, most herds are a few heads short. Pleasure to pay for the extra steers. Pleasure to take the extra money. You, uh, you got a receipt book around here somewhere? Uh, yes, sir. I had it around here the other day. Oh, there it is, sir. Thank you. Joe, the next time you're up in the Arizona Territory, you stop in and see us. Here? Just ask anybody where the Acabo is, and they'll tell you where to find it. All right, I'll do it. Yeah, it's a great spread, the Acabo. Good hunting, man. Come and plan to spend a week. I'd love to if my pa ever gives me a week off. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> here you are, Mr. Cartwright. All right, thank you. Here's yours, sir. Thank you. Hey, listen, thank you very much. Sorry we kept you so late.
ain't much of a watch around there. Anybody can walk right in. I saw you coming. Well, everything went like we planned it. Not quite. What happened to that cashier? Oh. You hit him too hard. I only tapped him. I swear he had a head made of eggshells. Where's the money? Well, let's get something straight first. There's a rope in this now. The price has gone up. I want a bigger cut. How much? Down the middle, half. Tell you what. You make it a third and I won't give you an argument. And you can count out your share right here and now. No tricks? I'm your friend, remember? I found you and your wife down in Mexico. No money, no food, holes in your boots, and wanted by the law. And I haven't taken very good care of you ever since. Sure you have. Because you needed a man who knew banks. We needed each other. Well, get the money and count it out. Jackson. How many banks have you peeled to get money to invest in high living and uh, racehorses that stop to graze? Two, three? What's the difference? No difference. It's just that you're going to ride back to get Lisa and head right for the border again. And that's a mistake. Because you're going to wind up broke and hungry just like you did before. Now you're really better off at the ranch. And Lisa loves it there. She'll like Mexico City much better. Green paper's gonna put us right back on top again. Some of those blankets on the bed and wrap them up good. Put them on his horse and dump them in the rocks in one of the canyons on the way south of here. What do we do with his horse? Turn him loose, first Indian sign we see. They'll steal him. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's the difference between you and me. Calamitous, I know. But there's so much money involved, I wanted to come and tell you about it personally. I've been sick, truly sick about this. Well, now, look, my, my $15,000 was given to a teller in your bank. Now, dude saw it, and so did the Farrell brothers. I'm sure they did, but unfortunately, the man who took your money and made out that check was an imposter. Now, this bears a genuine signature of our cashier. If you compare it with the one on the forgery... Yeah, they're completely different, all right. So how do I get my money? I'm deeply sorry, but we can't honor a forged check. Wait a minute. You've got a sheriff in Dryer Wells. What's he doing about this? Trying to find the imposter. Without success up until the time I left. Well, we suffered a loss, too. Our cashier was clubbed over the head and died later. Well, it's my turn to say I'm sorry. I'm going to keep these. I might need them. Dude, saddle the horses. Where are you going? After the money. Well, I'm going with you. I know you're not. Well, I left you in charge of the ranch while he's in San Francisco. It was my job to deliver and sell those cattle. I lost the 15000 I'll get it back. How about if I go along? I've never been to Dry Wells. Well, now's your chance. Be back as soon as we can, brother. Okay, dog, brother. I like a piece of candy. Or you might as well stick around for supper. Well, thank you. That's very nice. Mr. Jackson. 
Lisa. Yes, Mr. Farrell. Did the mail come? No, but I'd like to talk to you anyway. In the house, out of the sun, where it's cool. I don't mind the sun. I do. I'm buying for rations, huh? Good. How's the kitchen help treating you? Just fine, thank you, Mr. Farrell. Well, you're way too formal. Let's make it Mike and Lisa, shall we? Pedro! Get in here! Pedro! Scraps! Throw them out! And if you ever give Senora Jackson anything like that again, I'll slice off your ears and roast them and throw them to the dogs. It's not his fault. He gave me what I asked for. You put steaks in there. Thick, juicy, tender steaks. I want corn. I want potatoes. I want fresh bread and fresh butter. Si, patron. And two of the best bottles of wine I've got. Bueno. You gotta yell at them or they don't do anything. Speaking of wine, what's your pleasure? Nothing, thank you. Lisa, it's not right for you to be living out there in that adobe shack doing all your own work. I let you do it. Because it's what your husband wanted. It was wrong when he was here, and it's worse now. The better days. Lisa, in this part of the world, the quality lives in the big house. The hacienda. Shacks are for servants. This place is full of spare rooms. Pick anyone you want. Anyone. No, Mr. Farrell. I'm afraid my husband would never approve. Kelly! Open up the gate! Hey, Lisa. To what do we owe the honor of this visit? I heard your horse. I hoped it was my husband riding in. Has my brother been bothering you? He is persistent. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Made a quick trip. Maybe even a little quicker than you expected. $2,500. Last of the cart ride heard. Quartermaster Fort James satisfied? Why shouldn't he be? There's no better beef than Cartwright beef. There'll be none better than Farrell beef. And we got the money to operate the way we should. A little trick at the bank of dry wells, we'd put us right back on top again. We haven't heard the last of that. Don't you think I know that? All I bought was time. Time to get rid of the herd. Cartwrights will be coming over the mountain. And their boots, I do the same thing. And when they get here, what then? What can they prove? We bought a herd and we paid cash for it. We don't know any more about what happened after that than they do. Oh, you're not gonna believe that. We're gonna have to fight them. All right. We'll fight. We've got the men. What do you mean we got the men? We got three guns we can depend on. Mine, yours, and Keldy's. Well, hire more. There's something else on your mind. Let's have it. Yeah. Something else. I know that that thing in Dry Wells was just an excuse to get the Jacksons out of Mexico. I watched you work for a lot of years, Mike. Abner Jackson didn't know it, but he was dead from the minute you saw Lisa. You want Lisa. But she doesn't want you, and that's the way it's going to be. Don't you mouth off at me, boy. You're talking to the man. Changed your pants, cleaned your messes, wiped your nose, and paid your bills ever since you were born. Paid my bills. You were the one that couldn't cut loose from the poker tables till you were in so deep we had to mortgage the ranch. My ranch. I built it. Our ranch. Pa left it to both of us. Get out of here. How many fights we had, Mike? Huh? Hundred? Two hundred? And you won them all, except the last one. 
I could have broken you over my knee if I wanted to. Not then or now, and don't ever try. Stay away from Lisa. Stay clear away or we're going to tangle. And that'll be the second and last fight you'll lose. Billy Blake was right in here under this table all the time you and the Farrells was in the bank. Well, Billy was getting on. He, uh, he didn't see too good, didn't hear too good. I guess that's how come somebody could hide in here until he pulled the blinds, locked the door. Uh, no suspects, huh? We didn't even know what the man looked like until we got through a telegraph. But we tried anyway, as hard as we know how. You see, Billy was a cousin of my wife's. Four days before she'd let me stay in the house long enough to eat a meal. Well, there's nothing more to see in here. Aside from my 15000 did the bank lose any money? No, but the vault was locked. You know, Mr. Cartwright, the description of that cashier you sent, it, well, it seems to fit a man who was around here for two or three days before the bank was robbed. He's plumb gone since. This whole thing was well planned. Yeah, had to. Bank was closed, vault was locked. That fake cashier didn't stand to make a cent unless he knew that you and the Farrells and the money was going to walk into this bank. Yeah. You think he pulled it off alone? I don't know. We're not going to know until we catch him. You just want to walk down to jail with me. I got some coffee. Sounds good. Boys, it ain't fresh, but... I found him hid under some rocks in a stub canyon off Apache Flats. Got one bullet through the heart. It's the phony cashier. I found this in one of his pockets, and that's all I found on him. You know her? Nobody I ever saw. I've seen everybody around here within two days' ride. You know, in my opinion, we just slammed into the end of the box canyon. Take him down to docks. That dead man ain't gonna help us none. Looks to me like he wasn't in this alone. There's only two other people who knew we were bringing $15,000 to that bank. The Farrell brothers. They did kind of open that bank easy like, didn't they? What do you know about him, Sheriff? No, oh, not very much. Except that they're long gone into Arizona territory by now. Cattle sold, the money stashed, and out of my reach. Who's the law down there? Well, there's a territorial marshal rides by the Acabo about once every six months. Outside of that, I... Farrell's are pretty much about all the law there is. Mind if I keep this? Nope. Let's go see the Farrell brothers. From what I hear, they got a real fort down there. They hire a lot of border gun hands. You do a sight better sticking your head in a rattler's nest. Yeah, maybe so, but there's no other way to get to them. Come on, let's ride. <laughs> Oh, just how far is this Farrell Ranch? Oh, I figured the Cabo ought to be about another day's ride. The Cabo. You know, that's a name I've been hearing ever since I was a kid. Uh, Cabo, it's Spanish. It means I finish. Yeah, well, I hope it isn't our finish. Well, you're full of witty sands and optimism. That's what I like about you, dude. By the way, uh, how are we going to get into the feral place? I'm going to ride up and ride in. Oh, yeah, just like three fat little quail flying straight into the barrels of a shotgun. Straight forward. That's you, Joe. Not me. I'm a little more, uh, sneaky. The devious is the word I had in mind, but sneaky will do fine. I read a story once. It's about a big fort. 
There were some soldiers trying to get in. So they built a big wooden horse. And they took it up to the gate and left it. Yeah, it's a Trojan horse, so on. Trojan horse, yeah. You get past bays and duns, and I'm lost. The people opened the gate and dragged the horse inside. There were men inside the horse. When the soldiers got back, they had the gate open and the battle half won. Now, it occurs to me, the two of us would be a lot better off if one of us was inside the fort when the other two rode up. Are you volunteering? Well, there's got to be somebody the ferals don't know. It seems to come down to me. <laughs> Candy, you are sneaky. You know, if the fighting starts, it'll be uh, you and me that's getting shot at, Joe. And I'll be the one man who ain't shooting at you. He thinks of everything, don't he? You know, how do you figure on getting inside? I think I'll get me some boards and build me a horse. what you think, mister. You don't get in here until you tell me what you want. What's going on out there? Some saddle tramp wants to see the boss. Well, boss. All right, open the gate, let him in. All right, you're in. Now, what do you want? Work. I'm a top hand. You any good with that gun? Try me. Find out. Well, he comes right at you, doesn't he? I like that. And we can use another hand. Can't use you, mister. Kelly, get him out of here. You heard the man. Move! Hurry up! Out! Take him, Kelly. Tell your hired hand to get out of that gun belt without touching the gun. Do what he says, Kelly. It's the kind of man you hire. He looks like a short measure of nothing to me. You want to get out of those gun belts? I'll show you. That won't be necessary. I guarantee no gunplay. He took our best hand apart without even working up a sweat. We need him. Maybe. Where are you from? Different places. What places? Virginia City, Gold Hill, 
Carson, Tona Paw, dry wells all over. All right. I want $10 more a month than he's getting. Well, you're worth it. You're hired, friend. Thank you kindly. I'm Mrs. Lisa Jackson. Something I can do for you? I heard you say you were from the north. Dry wells. Yeah, that's one of the places I stopped at, yeah. My husband is up there. On business. I wondered if you might have seen him. Jackson? No, I don't think I met anybody with that name. He's dark. Curly hair, hazel eyes, mustache. Well. Lisa, I see you've met her new hand. We were just talking about dry wells. She was asking me about her husband. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't meet anybody by that name. But I was just in there long enough to say howdy and goodbye. Yes. Well, thanks anyway. Bye. Pretty woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You came in from up Reno way. Mm -hmm. How long were you on the trail? Three, four weeks. You moved right along, huh? I don't stay where I don't like what I see. No offense. I wasn't trying to pry. It's just that outside news is scarcer around here than dancing girls. And I thought something might have happened along the way. No, nothing. Oh, there was a bank robbery in Dry Wells. Uh, something different about it. I never did get the straight of that. I guess you know there's more to your job than just guarding that gate. Gun hand pay, there usually is. Well, Mrs. Jackson is the worrying kind. That robbery had nothing to do with her husband. No point in telling her about it. I wasn't planning to. Good. But she lives in an adobe out back. She asked me to see nobody bothers her while her husband's gone. If I'm not around, that's part of your job. Mm -hmm. Keep everybody away from there, including my brother. Well, that might not sit too good, a hired hand chasing the boss. The boss? I hired you. I didn't say anything about chasing. You just walk up and stand there till he leaves. Kelly! Over here. If Mike wants to know why you're there, just tell him to ask me. All right, we'll do. Take over here. Candy's gonna get something to eat. That's what I was gonna do. Look, you've already hit the kitchen twice. It's time Candy's first. Digging right in, ain't you? Making yourself a home? I'm doing what I'm told, just like you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. You're shining up to the wrong fella. Josh is just the pup. Mike runs this spread. And something else. You and me, we ain't through yet. We got one to go. Well, you try it. You might get yourself a raise. <laughs> when I'm ready. And you may as well give that saddle of yours away, because you sure ain't gonna be needing it. Nice evening, Lisa. Pleasant out here, isn't it? Yes, it is, Mr. Farrell. Still Mr. Farrell, huh? Lisa, I I don't want to hurt you. But I've I've got to tell you the truth. I I don't think you're ever gonna see your husband again. On, on that ride up north, why, he talked about 
I talked about California and a, and a fresh start. I didn't mention it before because... Well, I just, I just couldn't find the right words. But Lisa, he's, he's not coming back. He just, just rode on west. I don't believe you. Wait, I know how hard it is to accept because of the way you feel about him. But it's true. I even lied about the mail for the same reason. The mail from the north comes twice a week, not once every two weeks, like I said. I've had four letters from Drywell since we got back. Good night, Mr. Farrell. Wait, Lisa. There's something else. You don't have to worry. Because I'm going to see to it that you don't want for anything ever. Not for the rest of your life. And I'll be proud to do it, Lisa. I don't want anything from you, Mr. Farrell. All right. I spoke too soon. Think about it, Lisa. I'd break my back to make you happy. Miss Jackson? Fresh water. Who told you to fetch anything? I asked him to, Mr. Farrell. Thank you very much, Candy. Mm -hmm. You take a lot on yourself, boy. After this... After I... this! Candy will do Lisa's chores. She likes it better that way. And so do I. I got a tramp in there all dusty and sweating. I guess it's time old bone bag and me did our little trick. Oh, son. This rock don't have to be big enough to hurt him. Come on, son. Just so he knows it's there. And now look at that. Convince anybody. I trained him myself. Because when that weather turns nasty, there's no better excuse for toasting your feet on someone's bunkhouse stove than a horse that comes up all uh, cripple-like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I seem to remember the first time you came to our ranch. Well, I've done it again, bone bag. I swear I'm gonna have to have my mouth sewed shut. Another mile of dusty road and tight boots, and I bet he's gonna make me walk every step of the way. Dude, you can count on it. Open it up, like I say, huh? Tell you, tell me who you are and what you want. Well, now, are you going to stand there spouting questions? Will a couple pilgrims die of thirst? Who is it? It's Joe Cartwright. Open the gate and let him in. Josh, look who's here. Joe, how are you? Hi, Mike. Hey, you remember, Good. dude, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you bet, right. dude. Come right in. You got a lame horse. Yeah. Glad you made it. Barely. Joe uh, is Candy, one of my men. Uh, he'll take care of your horses for you. Howdy. Candy? Mm -hmm. Come on, you gotta be kidding. Nobody's gonna name my Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in the house. I got something to cut the dust out of your throat. Take that my horse, good. Candy. Yeah, Joe, the Acaba's a great little spread. Of course, it's pistolero country down here, you know. Border gangs strike without warning. Steal everything but your bones. That's why the fences and the guards outside. Gotta be very careful in the hills, but the hunting's great. I bragged the cart right about our hunting, brother Josh. Now it looks like we've got to prove it. Gentlemen, here's to a strong drink, a hot bath, and a soft bed. Just for the man needs after a long ride. Joe, dude.
Mike, the, uh, the hospitality is great, but this isn't a pleasure trip. Oh? Well, I don't understand. Yeah, well, that $15,000 cashier's check I got at the bank, that's a forgery. It's no good. The bank won't honor it. A forgery? But how could that be? We, we both stood there and watched him make it out. Yeah, but the man was an imposter. A real cashier was hit on the head. Died before he regained consciousness. Well, I don't believe it. Josh? If you say it's true, it's true, but I... I can't see how... I didn't know that man. He said I'd been pointed out to him. I'd never seen him before. That's why he let us in the door. I, I'd love to help you, Joe, but... you saw and heard what I saw and heard. Josh, can you add anything to that? No, except, uh... another drink might ease the pain a little. Yeah, it's a good idea. Joe, I... I don't know what to say. I thought I made a clean deal. Bought a herd, paid cash, and got a receipt. And I bought a phony $15,000 cashier's check. Well, you don't expect me to pay for the herd twice, do you, Joe? No, I don't expect you to pay twice. I, uh... I just thought you might be able to help me find him. Well, I told you I've, I've never seen him before. Yeah, that's right. You told me, didn't you? There must be somebody in Dry Wells knows that man. If it was me, I'd, I'd talk to every man, woman, and kid in that town. We already have no luck. Well, it's uh, it's going to be two or three days before Dude's horse is ready to travel. I hope that invitation to be your house guest still holds. Sure, sure it does. If Dude wants to make a swap way, he can have his choice of our stock. No, thanks. Me and old Bonebag been through a lot together. I'll keep him. Speaking of old Bonebags, we better check on him. Thanks for the drink. We'll see you around. Hmm? Right. Right. How's the leg? Good, good. Did you do any good? This is what I expected, nothing. This woman out back, waiting for her husband to come back from dry wells. He's long overdue. Her picture's in that locket you're carrying. How long do you think it'll take to heal? Well, I don't know. Two or three days, anyway. Go up past the bunkhouse circle, come in the back. I'll cover. Some box stalls in the barn. I'll get some medicine for this leg. All right, thank you very much. was dead. I wouldn't believe it. But I knew. We were very close. Even when we had to be apart. He was with me. Inside. A gentle, glowing warmth. Always there. One night, I woke up. Suddenly, cold and empty and alone. There was nothing there. Nothing at all. And I knew. He made mistakes. He got into trouble trying to get money to buy me the things he thought I wanted. And all I ever wanted was him. Hi. Ms. Jackson's woodpile was down to nothing. Uh, your brother asked me to rack up enough for a week or two. Mr. 
My husband was working for them. He stole your money for them. And they killed him. And they're going to pay for it, Mrs. Jackson, right now. Mr. Cartwright, I believe I can help you. I think you better stay out of it. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm already dead. I died with my husband. Took you long enough. Wait a minute. Stay here and watch the gate till I tell you different. You want me to do what? I want you to open your safe so I can have a look inside. You think your money's in there? Yeah. Yeah, I think you planned this whole thing right from the start. There's money in there, but it's my money. And that doesn't mean we had anything to do with the robbery. The cashier spilled some ink on some of that money. I think it's in your safe. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been called a thief. This is, uh, this is De La Frontera brandy from Spain. Last bottle in the territory. Why don't we open it up, have a drink, and start all over again? I think we ought to open the safe. Well, if you put it that way. Fuck shot load. Go ahead and try it. No guts. You could have bluffed him. It's too late for bluffing. It is now. What are we going to do? Royal Seiko. Time they find him, it'll look like a couple of fools got caught in a flash flood. And what about me, Mr. Farrell? Now that I know all about it, are you going to drop me off a cliff, too? He's not going to do anything to you, Lisa. I won't let him. You try, Josh. But you couldn't stop him. I can stop him. Did you try at Dry Wells? Mr. Cartwright and I had a long talk. He told me what happened at Drywell's. He even brought me this. You killed my husband. That's right. And I'm sorry you found out about that. Because now you're going to have to go along with Joe and Dude. Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of this. I told you to stay away from Lisa or we tangle. And I told you you're talking to the man. Thief 
combination is written on the bottom of the desk drawer. God bless the house. <laughs> your money, sure enough. Yeah, $15,000 of it. Give the rest of it to Sheriff and Drywells along with Candy's friend. He can turn it over to U.S. Marshal. When you are ready, senores, the horses wait. Right away, amigo. You know something? What? I wish I'd never seen this money. Sparking a new school teacher, we figured we'd come over and take a look. Uh, though maybe you were thinking about going to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know we don't hold with no book learning. We're gonna be hog farmers, just like Pa. Uh. Class is dismissed. It is such a lovely day for horseback riding, and you are so thoughtful to suggest it. It's my pleasure, Miss Pettigrew. Abby. Class is dismissed. <laughs> Talk like that in front of his love, we get a swell head. Joe, do you think I could ride him? Well, sure, why not? He's real gentle with ladies. What's your fault? Mm. What's the matter? Ow. Ooh, it's Easy. my ankle. Not a swell. I think it's broke. No, no, no. We'll hear no more of that. Mr. Cartwright, I just can't stay here as a long-term house guest. Now, you can't stay at your own place with a broken ankle, can you? No. You're the best thing that's happened around here in a long time, Peach. <laughs> you might even get to like us. Yes. Thank you, Candy. Well? Uh, no luck. I thought I could get Mrs. Ferguson. She was a pretty good substitute teacher, but she can't quit her job at the millinery store. Uh, but it'll be easy enough to find some. Ain't no big deal teaching school. I got an idea, Joe. Yeah, what's that? Who says it's no big deal? Why don't you do it? Why don't I do what? We'll teach school for a couple of weeks. Oh, come on. I'm... Well, what, are you, what are you looking at me like that for? I was just thinking. Miss Pettigrew, 
How do you think Joseph would make out as a teacher? Well, he says it would be easy enough. I think he'd make a fine teacher. Well, I think he'd make a great teacher. You know, as a matter of fact, I would. I'd make, uh, I'd make a great teacher. I, I just have a lot of work to do here, that's all. That's no problem. I'll do the work for you. I'll do my work myself, thanks. Joseph, every man, married or single, owes something to the children of his community. Now, what have you done for the children of your community? Well, I, nothing. I, I was... Absolutely nothing, Joseph. Now, don't you think it's about time you assumed some responsibility? Well, Papa, I'm willing to do my share, but, I, but I'm not going to teach school. <laughs> Now look, I'm not kidding you. I am not going to teach school N.O. No, that's it. I don't, I don't want to do it. Our new teacher, Billy. He look kind of natural, don't he? Mm hmm. What are you two wondering? Well, um, me and Billy, uh, we were thinking about how Miss Pettigrew always wanted us to come to school. We thought we'd come over and enroll. You two want to enroll? Sure. Why not? We as good as anybody, ain't we? Don't sit on the desk. Do you want to go to school? Take a seat. Uh, any place in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, right up front where I can keep an eye on you. Right here. Anything you say, Joe. And from now on, the name is Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Mr. Cartwright? Mm -hmm. you, you hear that, Mr. McNabb? I mean, from, from now on, Joe ain't Joe. Joe is Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Take off your hat. Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Show some respect. Kathy? Kathy? What's the matter with her? She's scared, Mr. Cartwright. Scared of what? She never had a man teacher before. Kathy? Hey, Kathy, honey, you're not scared of me, are you? Oh, now, how can that be? Why, after all the times I've taken you on rides and you went over to your house to see your pa? You can't be afraid of me. Let me see a little bit of a smile. Okay, that's better. Hey, all you... All you kids. No, I accidentally made Miss Pettigrew hurt her leg, so I'm gonna have to be your teacher for a little while. I don't know too much about being a teacher, so it's gonna be up to you to help me. Now, will you help me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, good. How about you show me where you sit, huh? Where's your seat, Kathy? Over there. There you go, honey. Um, my desk's over there, Mr. Cartwright. Go sit down, Mary. All right, erase it, Willie. Why me, Joe? The name's Mr. Cartwright. I said erase it. If you say so, let's go erase it, Billy. 
Here, Willie. Not you, Billy, you. You know, uh, you really shouldn't get all fretted up, Mr. Cartwright. My pa, he always says, uh, man, get fretted up, he's just gonna wear himself out. That's right. Man getting fretted so early in the morning, Mr. Cartwright. Gonna be plum turkey out before the day's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think we had enough school for one day, don't you, Billy? Yeah. See you tomorrow, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> And then Chicken Little said... That, uh, uh, then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. Yeah, yes, Kathy? That's not the way Miss Pettigrew said it. She did it with different animal sounds. Well, that, that, that was Miss Pettigrew. You don't expect me to do it that way, do you? Yeah. 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 Yes, you do. Well, all right, I'll, I'll try. And then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I must go and tell the king. <laughs> Children, I, I think I'll find another story to read, all right? We got a much better one for you. Chicken Little? Chicken Little? The sky is falling. Oh, the sky is falling on my head. Oh, mercy. <laughs> oh, you stay right here. I'm gonna go tell the king. <laughs> hey, get back inside. Quick, quick. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. <laughs> Where you boys been? I ain't seen you since the sun up. What are you talking about school, Paul? You know, Joe Cartwright, he's uh, taking over for Miss Pettigrew now that she's uh, laid up. And we're just kind of been pestering him. This, uh, Miss Pettigrew, she ain't got you boys hankering to go to school, has she? <laughs> Us, Paul? What do we do at school? Well, there's them that values it. It looks to me like we got everything right here we're ever going to need. That's right, Pa. Well, get out and get your chores done. It's getting late. Right, Pa. Right. Hey, Joe. Joe, you hear the news? Huh? Chicken Little just came by. The uh, sky falls off till next Thursday. Hmm. <laughs> Abby. Yeah, you met my friend, Chicken Little? <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, nothing. He thinks he's funny. How did your first day go? Many problems? Well, the McNabb boy showed up, if you consider that a problem. Joe, that's wonderful. I have been trying to get them to enroll for the past year, but their... Well, their father's been dead set against it. Yeah, well, he's been doing you a favor. Why did they cause you a lot of trouble? No, not too much. I didn't stay in school long enough. Joe, they need an education. And if you could just give them the special attention they need... Now, I'm not going to bend over backwards for the McNabb boys. If they come back to school, they'll get the same treatment the other kids get. If they start fooling around again, they'll get something the other kids don't get. You surprised me. Why? I just didn't think you would admit the McNabb boys could get the better of you, that's all. No, I didn't say they could. I just said they better not try. But I think you have a lot to learn about being a teacher. Yeah, well, you got a lot to learn about the McNabb brothers. bring you your reward. Try, try again. All that other folks can do, why with... Patience. Patience should not you. Only keep this rule in view. Try, try again. It's very good, Mary. was very good, Mary. Thank you. Just 
sit down. Uh, I think we've all been working real hard. You young folks, why don't you take a little rest, and the older ones can work on their arithmetic. Work on your arithmetic. Right. chilly in here, so uh, could we put some more wood on the fire? Well, it's very nice, Willie. Thank you. How funny you're going to look while you're splitting wood this afternoon. We're going to need a cord. Lady, you know a lot about playing cards. Well, I find a small knowledge of the science of mathematical probabilities to be great. Hey, Joe. A little late today, huh? Yeah, and to keep a couple of little boys after school. Been tired? Yeah. Joe, I hope you're not too tired to read me a story before you go to sleep. <laughs> Owl and Pussycat's my favorite. Well, the figures. <laughs> Perhaps you're finding taking care of a bunch of kids, to use your words, is more difficult than you thought, Joe. Was it Willie and Billy that you kept in after school? Oh, yeah, it was, it was Willie and Billy. Because I'm not too worried. I figure in two or three days they'll stop coming to school. Well, that seems like a pity, Joe. Oh, well, that's your opinion. Oh, I agreed to teach these kids, but I didn't say anything about raising Willie and Billy McNabb. Well, you know, teaching is only uh, part of a teacher's task. Concern for the boys' future welfare is the rest of it. Oh. oh. For some reason, I thought that was their father's job. They need to look up to someone more than their father, Joe. You could be that someone. Oh, come on, will you, Abby? These kids don't give a darn about going to school. All they want to do is horse around. Well, maybe they're testing you. Maybe they want to make sure that you're worthy of their admiration. Uh, the admiration of Willie and Billy McNabb are the least of my worries. I just hope I can keep them from burning the school down. Yeah, we 
Thank you. Now, we're not going to do any right until the hands warm up. So I'm going to put some problems on the board, and you just shout out the answers. Fall. Are you? <laughs> All right. Two plus two. Four plus four. Three plus four. Two plus four. Four plus four. All right. All right. Yeah, Tommy, no problem? No, but I think you do. Look. <laughs> Not you, Tim. All right, what'd you do with the stove? Well, Mr. Carr, are you plumb suspicious? When school's over, I'm gonna check that stove, and if I find out somebody's been fooling around with it, that somebody's gonna be in a lot of trouble. We better get out of here, Mr. Carr. It's bad in here. You'll get out of here when I tell you to. Now go on and sit down. Sit down. that doing up a chimney, Mr. McNabb. All right. All right, you want to act like little boys, and that's just how I'm going to treat you. Now, which one of you wants to go first? Now, hold on, Joe. That ain't nothing to get in a sweat over. Just a little low smoke. I said, which one of you wants to go first? Now, Billy didn't have anything to do with that chimney. Why don't you just let him get on out of here? All right, Billy, get on home. I've done my share. I want to stay. Billy, you get. Now look, Joe. You've been having yourself at times playing school teacher. That's fine. I've been going right along with you. But a tannin? No. I'll fight you. Fight you like a man and no hard feelings. Nobody gonna pants with me but my pa. All right, that's enough, Willie. I told you that's enough. choice. I'm just sorry I let him get to me. Oh, is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I didn't hit him hard. His pride's hurt worse than anything. I don't think for sure he won't be back to school. I suppose that's best for both of us. Joe, that is where you're wrong. Look, you've accomplished something that I could never do. I'd like to know what that is. You got them to go to school. Now, regardless of their motives, it's a start. Now, that is the important thing. 
important or not, it's too late. It's over. Joe, it's not over. You must talk to those boys. <sighs> Abby, look, if I couldn't get through to them before, I certainly am not going to be able to get through to them now. Joe, as a teacher... As a te You keep saying, as a teacher. I am not the teacher, Abby. You are. That's right. I am their teacher, and their future is my responsibility. Now it's your responsibility. Not anymore. Joe, for what it's worth, I think Abby's right. You know, I'd, I'd love to know why you two are getting so upset over the McNabs. Oh, and you're not. I did the best I could. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of it. You know, I seem to recall you being sent home from school on several occasions. I don't remember the teacher quitting on you. Well, that's right, and you didn't quit on me either. You set me straight, you sent me back to school. Now, why can't their father do the same thing? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Staying mighty close to home today, ain't you? Saturday, and we just ain't got nothing to do. Wouldn't have nothing to do with them bruises you keep trying to hide, would it? Oh, I seen them last night when you come sneaking in. because of something my boys have done, are you? Well, why? Did they say they'd done something? Well, they, they said they'd been funny you some, and uh, last night, Willie come home looking like you'd been in a fracas. Well, they, they have been fun of me a little bit, but I don't know anything about a fracas. You know anything about a fracas, Willie? Huh? I say you know anything about a fracas. No, I guess not. You boys go find yourself some chores. Me and Joe got some talking to do. Now then. Tell me what's on your mind, Joe. Well, first I was wondering when you're going to butcher. We'd kind of like to have some of those hams of yours hanging in the smokehouse. Ain't going to be long now. Cold weather's coming. Me and the boys need some things. Yeah, boys need things. They've been complaining? No, no, nothing like that. Well, they better not complain. He got just about everything a hog farmer needs to have. What about an education? I thought that's why he is here. All right, that's why I'm here. I was hoping you'd tell him to go back to school. No, sir. I just don't see it that way. How do you see it? It's a bunch of foolishness for a hog farmer. Boys are going to take over when I leave off. They got the house, the land, the stock. You, you keep saying hog farmer. I, I just don't see where it makes any difference what a man does for a living. He still needs an education. Yo, I don't want you putting any highfalutin ideas in them boys' heads. I came here hoping you'd put some highfalutin ideas in their heads. I can't read or write, and I get along good. So will they. I guess that's it, then. Be sure to let us know when you got those hands ready. I'll sure we'll do it. Come on, boys. Joe have to say. Said he wanted to buy hounds. 
Mostly, he just tried to get me to send you boys back to school. He didn't say anything about me. Was there some reason he should have said something about you? Well, I guess not. Go on, tell him. Me and Joe, we locked horns yesterday. And, uh, well, he whooped me pretty good. I figured as much. So I, I couldn't go back there now anyhow. Why not? Because I got my pride. Well, that kind of pride you don't need. I expect you was in the wrong. If you got to eat crow, eat crow. But you don't have to go back to school. I just can't see no sense in taking time off from your chores to learn something you don't need to know. Pa? You, you're dead set against us going to school, huh? I am, but I want to know how you feel about it. You want to go to school? No. No, I, I don't want to go. You want to go to school? No, I, I, I don't want to go either. Well, settle then. I hear no more about it. Willie? Yeah? How you figured Joe never told Paul about that ruckus you had? How do I know? Seems like that'd be the first thing a teacher would do. Why don't you just hush up? He ain't hardly like any man I ever knew before. Say doing it was easy. Pa says if a man's got to eat crow, he should go ahead and eat it. That the only reason you cleaned the place up? Look, you didn't tell Pa we had a fight. So I figure I owe you one. Kind of hoped you did it because you want to come back to school. We don't need any schooling, do we, Billy? Willie, I, I've been thinking. You know what Ma used to say? Hey, you just remember what Pa said. Don't need no schooling to be a hog farmer. I don't like to go against your pa, but I think he's wrong. I think you need schooling. I think a hog farmer can be a better hog farmer if he's got an education. Look, Joe. Mr. Cartwright. Just done made up our minds. We got a lot of chores to do. Now come on home. Now come on. Mr. Cartwright, this here of Ma's Bible. Before she died, she wrote something inside. I sure would appreciate it if you could read it to me. Willie? Yes, it don't hurt none. My dear sons, I have so little to leave you, I must count each thing I have with care. I leave you with my love, with the hope it will warm and guide you through all the years to come. I leave you the brave plans I had for you, knowing that somehow you'll make them real. And I leave you this book, the word of God to light your way. Live by it. Live by it 
And remember, my love is with you always. Thank you, Mr. Carey. I guess it's about time to start school, huh? Remember that. Why? Why? Uh, now. N O W now. C. <laughs> All right, that's enough. C's backwards. Let's turn it around. Is. The cat on the the mat. Mat. <laughs> Willie. <laughs> Very good. Sit down. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? That's good. That's good. Billy, you're next. Go on. that word. What? What's that word? Now I lost count. Four and two is six. W Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. I thought so. He's just studying a little bit, Pa. I can read. So. I thought we agreed hog farmers didn't need no book learning. Joe Cartwright read us what Ma wrote in our Bible. And we thought she'd like it if we could get some learning. I, I could read it to you if you'd like, Pa. I memorized it by heart. Pa? Huh? Pa, Joe says a man is... He's only half a man without any learning. Thank 
you. And I'm so glad to be back. And we're all glad you're back. We've got a surprise for you, a little program plan. Everybody sit down. All right, Tommy, you can start. The Gettysburg Address by President Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot concentrate. Consecrate. Consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will... Good to see you. Why don't you come on in and sit down? I come for my boys. Well, I think you boys would like to stay in school. You two get on home, there's chores to do. No, Will. No, I'm going to fight you on this. These boys need an education. Fight me, huh? Now, there's something I've been waiting to hear. Come on outside. Now, wait a minute, Will. That's not what I meant when I said fight you. You told my boys that a man with no learning was only half a man. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'll be waiting for you outside. <laughs> Children, this uh, will give me an opportunity to find out just how much you've learned since I've been away. out of the way, boys. I'll show him who's half a man. Your man, Pa. You proved your point. But so is Joe. If you're gonna do any more fighting, you're gonna have to fight me and Billy.
You boys fight me? No. Willie, I don't want you fighting your pa. If schooling for me and Billy is worth Joe fighting for, I guess it's worth me and Billy fighting for, too. Again, you or again anybody. It's over. My pa and Joe, Mr. Cartwright, are fine. Oh. Would it be okay if I went on with the reading? Please do, Willie. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth.